Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the day of the video, Darren. How's it going today? Today, we're in the penultimate week, and we start off that week by being five minutes early to work so I can start my vlog a little bit early. Today, well, last night, I had a, like, hideous sleep. I kept waking up, sleeping on my arms, so they were, like, dead and really painful. Um, so that wasn't very good. But otherwise, woke up feeling relatively awake, considering how much I was awake last night. Um, got ready, headed on into work, tried a new razor because my old razor was like fucking old <laughs> so that was all right otherwise though we're at work i've got some tests to fix it's test week which usually means well i don't know i've never been in a test week before but um means addressing test failures but i have a feature that i'm trying to merge in and there are some tests failing on that branch um and i need them to go before i merge them in um i'm like what 99.999 recurring percent Sure, it's nothing to do with my change, <laughs> but we'll find out. I ran some builds over the weekend, so hopefully I should have... The, if the tests are failing on 7.18, if, if they're failing on like the main dev branch, on like, well, the branch that I'm on, then hopefully they... Uh, if, they're, if they're appearing there and on mine, then I know for a fact they're not m me. Um... Unless something's gone weird when I was merging and I've auto merged something out. I don't know. So, let's go do that. Otherwise, tonight, busy as normal, shopping, all that shit, you know. <laughs> it's Monday. Let's go. And we is home, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going today? Today, I've had a pretty good day at work. Um, I was focusing on these hooks have been pissing me off. Essentially, we only have these four hooks and I have too many things to hook up onto them. I'm going to try and find a better solution. Also, Laura said she'd fix my coat for me tonight. So, I'm going to put that somewhere to remind us. Put that there. I have like three hoodies and two coats. And I feel like you're excessive on there. Especially because like the hoodies don't hang up very well. Let's see if this... Because oh, this, this one doesn't have a bloody hook on it. That's the problem. I have to hang it by the hood. So it has to go on top. God damn it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today I've had a pretty good day. I went in expecting to have to fix a couple of bugs. Um, however, I've run a build overnight and they passed lol so i added them to a list of intermediate tests because i didn't change anything it just passed um that potentially need investigating uh see we've got hooks there annoyingly we don't have many like the doors you can't put shit you know like the old uh things that you put over the door so you can't see what i'm pointing at there um you can put like hooky things over the doors and shit the doors have been painted on too many times so it's like impossible See, I need a solution for this. I'm going to figure some out. Um, I hope you don't mind me walking back and forth as I try and do this. Solution number one involves wearing one of them. That reduces our problem significantly. Um, so, words that I was saying to you involved, included words such as... Um, yeah, those tests... Yeah, so I was moving on to something else, basically, because that test turned out not to be a problem. And I was given some different intermediate tests to try and fix. Um, but I had quite a fun day uh, fixing them. One of them, well, two of them, were failing because they were relying on the data coming out of a database in a certain order. Um, and they weren't always coming out in that order. Um, so the test was failing. It was like get list, and then it was like getting the first item in that list. Um, and the suggested change that I was suggested to make was like assert that the list has a value, like has contains, basically, uh, using Hamcrest. Um, which is basically a quite a cool like assertion tool. Um, not quite as cool as a search J, but we're not allowed to use a search J yet. We will be at some point, but not yet. Um, which allow you to basically do like uh, Lambda stuff, but with like Fluent APIs instead. So that's quite cool. Um, yeah, it was, it suggested that we should basically search the list for invalid data, it then does the thing, and then we make sure that there's valid data in the list. The problem with that is there was already valid data in the list. The test did, like, changing it in that way does nothing, because you've essentially said, here's a list with one invalid piece of data in. Fix the list. Did the list contain something that was valid? Yeah, it did. <laughs> of course it did. Because uh, we did put valid data in there. Um, so I was trying to figure out a, a way of pulling out that, so be, without relying on the order of the information, which could change from this data call to this data call, um, 
I tried to create a way of getting out that information. That was fun. Took me a while. I found a nice interesting bug where a custom matcher that we had in the code, we had a, cu a custom matcher called has item n number of times and then accepts a number. Uh, and then in theory it searches through a list and goes, does it appear five times? Is this thing true five times? Which is all very well and good, except for the fact that the list <laughs> Uh, it asserts the value input is larger than zero and then goes, okay, right, have you got one of them? So for ages I had a really annoying error message of expected seven, got seven. Because behind the scenes it was just looking for one. <laughs> so if, it, if there was one thing in there, it would have gone assertion passed, expected seven, got one. <laughs> but obviously it doesn't do that, does it? So it took me ages to figure that out until I found out that we had a nice hard-coded thing, uh, which was like a nice bug. Turns out no one else has ever used that custom thing, uh, so I didn't solve anyone's problem. But um, I thought that was quite fun. But yeah, so that was good fun, going through the day trying to figure that out. Uh, I was also helping some other people through code reviews, and then I was looking at a test which I find quite... well. So. <laughs> Two, I started looking at two others on this list of things I need to fix. One of which says, here's the test, and the thing says, randomly fails. That's the reason. That's what it fails with. It just randomly fails. And there's like 20 asserts in there. And when I run it, it passes. And I ran it like 10 times. It passed every single time. Now, how am I supposed to fix that? I had a look through, and I was trying to find something where, like, maybe it's pulling it out of the database in the wrong order, and stuff like that, like the normal stuff that goes wrong. Um, but couldn't really find much. So I don't know what to do there. Um, another one, we have a test which checks whether or not you can connect to a service that we think, like a SOAP request, which pushes a SOAP request at a service. I know it's not a unit test, it's an integration test. Pushes a thing at the service and goes, can I connect, like tests the password and all this kind of crap. Um, and I've got to fix the fact that if, it, if the service is down, the test fails. What? Let's imagine then <laughs> that the configuration is fucked and we can't contact the service because the configuration's like pointed in the wrong place or something daft like that. And this test should pass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the test currently sets up all the stuff it needs to set up, hits the database, and tests that it got like a authenticated key back, basically. Um, and if it doesn't get that authentication key back, because I don't know the fucking server's down. Should that test pass? Should, should it? No? <laughs> Probably not. Um, the real question is, should we have an integration test of that kind running as part of the build? Maybe. Maybe we should promote it to a test environment before running that test. If we're using a service which can sometimes be down, enough for it to be added to this list, maybe we should... Uh, consider changing service. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was a good fun one. Otherwise though, ladies and gentlemen, lunch time spent a good amount of time programming. Um, what have I been doing? I've been trying to figure out... been trying to architect uh, the way that I now pull out, figure out which files I need to test. Um, because it's not as clean cut as it used to be because before the introduction of the new project files, and the new new project files, because at the moment it's project.json files and now it's going to go back to cs.proj uh, .cs files. Um, both of those things don't contain a list of classes. Um, previously, my old project would go through a list of um, the project file and basically go, right, that, 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 we need to test them. Um, that doesn't exist now, so I kind of need to go through ones I've got to do it in a different way. Um, I've got to figure out a way of not picking up test files uh, and all that kind of stuff. And I was trying to design a way of doing it. But just because I currently support .NET Core doesn't mean I don't want to be able to use that project file when I support the old versions. So, um, well, well, that's what I was basically deciding. I was trying to figure out a way of having it, depending on what it was looking for, figure out what it needs to look for and find it. Um, 
but yeah, so that's what I'm currently working on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and then that was about all for the day. We drove home, and I've just sorted out my video, just sorted out the hook situation a little bit by having my current coat, which is my smart coat, which is normally hung up to be fair, and that on there, and then this is a hoodie one for hoodies. I'm probably going to get annoyed about having to take this on and off all the time, but and also that, but. When I migrate back to my ni my normal coat, that won't happen as often because it's got a hook. What do I do with scarves? What do I do with scarves now? Put them in my wardrobe? Hopefully it's going to get a little bit like uh, warmer as time goes on. So, um, we'll put it back in there. I might not need them as often, you know? A little bit of programming there, then realised I was um, proofreading some stuff for Laura. So, did that for a little bit. Then I was doing dinner, then dad rang. It's all gotten crazy. <laughs> so yeah, right, I've managed to finish proofreading the thing that I'm proofreading for Laura. It's really difficult. Whenever I do things that need proofreading, like, well, my dissertation was the biggest thing. Uh, I didn't actually get her to proofread my CV. But either way, um, I get to proofread my dissertation and stuff. It's like so helpful. The problem is when I proofread her stuff, <laughs> Her, like, reading and writing level is, like, way above mine. Like, <laughs> way above. And I'm really informal and all that kind of stuff. So I just kind of pass it and try and pick out things like, oh, I did, like, maybe a couple more jazz hands here. Or my usual thing is there isn't enough punctuation here. I don't know if you've ever read my comment, my descriptions and all that kind of stuff. If I start writing long things, I used to usually have lots of commas and lots of dashes and everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I was reading through it and... Um, there's like parts where I'm like, that needs some more commas. <laughs> and then I'm reading it and I'm like, this doesn't make sense to me. Like this, just this sentence here flat out doesn't make sense. So I highlight it and go, does this make sense to you? <laughs> so, lol. Um, but yeah, so dinner is on its way. Laura's on her way. Dad's ringing me back at some point soon as well. Um, but yeah, good times ladies and gentlemen. Whew, but it's good fun, it's good fun. Um, also, like one of the things she's asked, uh, one of the questions is something like, what things that are happening can affect like a law firm? Um, like Brexit, for example, like that's a thing that could cause lots of things for a law firm to do, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, but she wanted to pick ones that weren't that. And I threw her the, um, uh, the AI stuff, like there's a lot of people now, a lot of companies pumping a lot of money into artificial intelligence and machine learning and all that kind of stuff. And where does that, what does that have an effect on like, um, privacy and all that kind of stuff. Like there was a case recently where the police in America requested, recorded Alexa messages, um, from Amazon and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then like, I then read this thing, which I have, I have opinions on, <laughs> and I'm reading her, like, dumbed down version of it, uh, not offensively, but obviously I know about it more, or whatever, oh, she's back, um, and I'm like, you're missing the point, man, <laughs> you know what I mean? And we have a time jump, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is one o'clock in the morning, I wasn't planning on staying up this late, but... I have. So the bay came home and we sorted out dinner and then sorted out the shopping list and whatnot before heading on out. We went shopping, bought Graham uh, another chewy thing because she's finally cleared through her chewy mer chew thing here. Um, she's still like nibbling on it in the corners of a cage. Um, so we're not going to give her the new one just yet. But um, I got bought some of that and bought some bedding and then we were looking around. We went as doing Sainsbury's as we normally do. Uh, then came back here, emptied out the bins. Put the shopping away, sorted the sandwiches out for tomorrow, and then we sat and like did separate things. I sorted out a bit of the surface for Laura. Um, Laura's been mostly using the My Old Surface Pro as her main computer now. Um, temporarily, she's looking at getting a, a new computer when uh, she does her training stuff, a proper computer, that computer's a bit underpowered. Um, thinking about the, probably the Dell XPS, although the problem is if she gets that, I might be jealous. Although I do prefer, I do like my Surface Book, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna get that. But I was sorting out some stuff, because obviously it used to be mine. Uh, I forgot that Google Drive is still hooked up to be mine. So I set that up for her. Um, and then she fixed my coat, my coat now, the one that had a hole in it under the arm. 
All fixed. Yeah. That's good. I've got a really tickly throat, man. Um, God damn it. Uh, but then, we, as we were doing that, we were watching um, The Grand Tour, which it's got to be said, I'm not massively impressed with. Um, but it's something that you just put in the background. And then, uh, Laura fell asleep through that, obviously. And then, <laughs> obviously. Um, and then she had an off to bed and I've been up doing some programming. It took me a while to figure out a way that I can do my file finding stuff. Um, because in some scenarios I'm going to have more information than I currently have. Um, what I'm kind of doing is I'm kind of having a system that uses the file finders that I currently have, or that, that style of like system that basically says, hey, find the files in this directory path using this information, find. And then I'm going to filter it, and I'm going to basically say, like, filter list using this, this, this. Um, because there are scenarios where, um, I don't know if I've said this out loud to you or not, um, the, yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, the test project file, uh, project files don't contain a list of all of the files that are within them. Um, so previously I was able to use the test project file to exclude all of the files that were tests. Um, this time I'm not going to be able to do that, so instead I'm kind of allowing I'm allowing the system to go through and find all CS files, um, and then I'm using the files held within the test projects. Um, I'm kind of excluding them. However, I'm also allowing the option to exclude other files because, for example, you may only want to run the test unit tests, but you also want to exclude your exceptions tests, um, which probably going to be in a different directory. So I'm going to allow you to do that kind of thing as well. It took me a while to figure out how I was going to infrastructure that and I was like, right, okay, let's sit down and do it and get like a semi-decent amount of this done um, so that I don't then tomorrow um, go, hmm, how am I going to do this? <laughs> you know what I mean? I changed my mind overnight or whatever. So good that I managed to stay up. Um, I've done just short of three hours of programming today because tomorrow I am going to struggle to hit that because we are going after work to town to go to a meeting conference thing all about uh, well it's called machine learning for muggles so it should be good um, so yeah I'm looking forward to that uh, also two people from work are going to so that should be good fun should know someone there obviously otherwise ladies and gentlemen that's all for today Lord didn't do that that's cool I reminded tomorrow um, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Lots of work tomorrow. More test fixing. Lots of stuff. Very busy. Very, very busy. This week is going to be a very busy week, to be honest with you. Um, oh, God. Every day, in fact, I'm doing something. Although we should have lots of time Thursday. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Wrapping up, we're wrapping up the daily vlogs on a busy week. I'll catch you later.